He was never a member of the Mafia. His Irish blood excluded him from their ranks. And yet his willingness to use violence, even when it was considered unnecessary, caused many a made man to fear him. He was responsible for numerous murders and one of the biggest cash heists in American history. His name was James Jimmy the Gent Burke. His friends simply called him the Irishman. He got the name Jimmy the Gent because it was reported that he tipped the drivers of trucks he was hijacking and helped out strangers, though it should be noted that these acts of altruism have not been substantiated. Raised in foster care and a Catholic orphanage, Jimmy never knew his father. His mother, Jane Conway, was a shadowy image in a dream, like you know someone is there, but you just can't make them out. She had given Jimmy up for adoption when he was only two years old. His time in foster care was marked by physical, emotional, and even sexual abuse. At the age of 13, Jimmy was sent to live with the Burke family of Rockaway, Queens, New York. Being placed in their care was one of the greatest moments of Jimmy's young life. They cared for him and loved him like their own son. Whenever he spoke of them, it was always with a smile. Even though he had chosen a life of crime, Jimmy visited them often and they were always happy to see him. As age crept up on his adoptive parents, Jimmy made sure they were financially taken care of in their golden years. You might be thinking, who in the world is Jimmy Burke? Never heard of him. Well, Robert De Niro made him famous in the 1990 Hollywood blockbuster, Goodfellas. De Niro's character, Jimmy Conway, was based on the real life Jimmy Burke. At the age of 18, Jimmy was busted for passing bad checks and received a five-year prison stint. He never gave up his friends, and this impressed the wise guys he was serving time with. As a result, Jimmy was able, even though he was Irish, to find good work under both the Lucchese and Colombo crime families. When Burke was released, he went back to the streets and made money in smuggling cigarettes, hijacking, extortion, drug dealing, and armed robbery. Burke loved to get a contract to hit, well, anyone. In 1962, he murdered his wife's former boyfriend who was found chopped to pieces in his own car. Murder was his way of keeping folks in line, and he didn't hesitate to whack fellow gangsters, friend or foe, just to get a larger slice of whatever scam the hapless victim happened to be involved in. Burke ran an informal crew for Paul Vario, a capo in the Lucchese Borgata. In the movie Goodfellas, his part was portrayed by Paul Servino. Members of this crew included Tommy DeSimone, played by Joe Pesci, and Henry Hill, played by Ray Liotta. The crew was based out of Brooklyn and Queens, favoring a bar Burke owned called Robert's Lounge. In the movie Goodfellas, Burke, Jimmy Conway, and Henry Hill went down to Florida and beat up a man who owed one of their friends a lot of money. They each received 10 years in prison, but got out in six. However, the crew, and more notably Burke and Hill's real claim to fame, came in 1978 with what has become known as the Lutanza Heist at JFK Airport. The crew got away with almost six million in cash and jewelry. The heist made Jimmy and the bosses very rich, but it also made Burke extremely paranoid. No one really knew how much the take would be, and Burke feared one of his men would let something slip. Besides, he reasoned, it was all his. He didn't want to share the loot with others. So in typical Burke fashion, he lured his friends into safe situations and one by one had most of them murdered. The number was reported to have been 10 men in all. Hill, who claimed being a mobster was better than being president of the United States, later became a government witness when it appeared that he was the next friend turned victim of Jimmy Burke's greed. Before the hit, Burke, 
who was violating the no drug policy with Henry Hill was exposed. The feds came down hard on the whole crew. They went to Hill and offered him witness protection. Burke, as a result of Hill's testimony, received a 20 year prison sentence. In 1985, he received an additional life sentence for the murder of Richard Eaton, who had swindled Jimmy out of nearly a quarter of a million dollars of drug money. In 1996, Jimmy died at the age of 64 of lung cancer while serving his life sentence. Though he probably wouldn't have gotten it, he would have been eligible for parole in 2004. One can't help but wonder if he ever saw the movie Goodfellas and what he thought of it.